All right, guys, welcome to Spoon CCW Live Show. Um, running a little behind tonight. Uh, I got some good stuff for you. Obviously, the show is brought to you by SpoonCCW.com and every sportsman's club. Um, cool stuff that happened this week. Um, we got a pretty good class schedule coming up. Um, stuff starting to filter back into the store more and more. Yeah. Um, we got, we, we were finally able to order some more, some more nine mil stuff, um, some more five, five, six stuff. So that's working out pretty good. Um, so getting the store restocked, we've been really busy, kind of a little bit absent from, uh, our social media accounts for the last couple of weeks, but, uh, <laughs> at that time, yeah, we uh. really just, uh, been been really busy. So what do we got for uh, classes? Five seventeen. Um, five spots left in that one. Um, Six fourteen. That one's open. Um, Six six. Um, all these are concealed carry classes. So we got five seventeen, six six, and six fourteen for concealed carry. All of them have slots in them. Um, I think I got to get 614 and 66 up on the website tonight, but we will get that up there. Is there a 6516? Yeah, it was full. Full. No. Full. Um, full. 711, personal protection in the home. Um, we have spots for that one. 712, personal protection in the home instructor. We have spots for that one if you're already a pistol instructor. 530 mm -hmm. is basic rifle and carbine. Um, 531. As of today, we're still doing the rifle carbine instructor. We may have to move that off to the fall, depending upon class signups for that, because we got to have four. But we will evaluate that later in the week. Um, anything else going on tonight? I think that's uh, pretty much it for the class schedule. Yeah, there's a bunch of bunch of people coming in and wanting classes and training and et cetera, et cetera. Um, of course, uh, defensive pistol classes, we got three in that for tomorrow and Sunday. Yeah. So, you know, but that's, you know, that's more than enough. So, yep. <clears throat> yeah, we only do five in that, so that's plenty. Yeah. Tough class. Um, yeah, it is. The, on the range tip, I, I looked at that, that ace drill. Um what do you got? 18 feet, six yards. So yeah. this, this drill is, uh, it's an eight inch circle, um, 18 feet, six yards from concealment, shoot six rounds in six seconds from, from concealment. Drill. Um, yeah. All rounds have to land in the eight inch circle. Uh, it's a good drill. It's, uh, yeah. more challenging than it sounds on paper. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you bobble, you're, you're done. Yeah. You know, Typical, you know, you're looking at, you know, if you're really know what you're doing, you know, you're going to be a couple seconds just drawing from concealment. Mm -hmm. And depending upon where you're drawing, you know, where you're, you know, doing, you know, you look at, you know, speed times of, you know, some of the top, you know, I mean, the top shooters in the world, they're just barely breaking sub second from. But outside of waistband, nothing in the way rig. So, yeah. yeah. You know, if you can good do it in under two seconds, you're doing really well. You know, so, mm -hmm. you're looking at more like three seconds just to draw, you know, to yeah. draw. So, now right. you got. By the time you get one round on target, yeah. 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 Draw. Exactly. You know, draw from, con draw, draw from concealment, come <clears throat> out, acquire your sights, get your sights, get your, you know, get your sights, alignment, sight picture. Get the first round on target, and then you got six, you know, five more rounds to shoot. So in three yeah, seconds. So in reality, in three you, you get three to three and a half to four seconds if you're really pushing it. So you know you're looking at you get six you know, rounds on. Target. You're looking at half second splits. That's yeah. yeah. That's doing pretty good. Yeah, um, that's doing real well. I mean, what what's this what's this good for? Uh, draw practice, obviously. Um, Side line of sight picture on the way out from your draw. You really got to get. Uh, your draw lined out and yeah. and get those sights on target right from the holster. You can't be 
you're not going to be able to have time to hunt for the front sight or no, no. make adjustments or anything like no. that. Uh, really, it's going to test all your fundamentals, uh, trigger yeah. control, side line of sight picture. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not going to do a whole lot for your stance, um, but as far as your grip and breathing and stuff like that is going to, um, it, it's really going to make a difference. Uh, trigger control is going to be huge you know map yeah it, it's going to be huge because you're, you're going to have to work at trigger um fast and flat fast and flat <laughs> fast and flat you fast and flat right. um and yeah. the well the other thing and you got it wrote down here is this is going to test your equipment this is going to tell you whether your gear is up to snuff yeah um if if you're you know getting hung up in your holster if you can't get it out um front sight's hitting on it uh you got mean? it in the wrong spot whatever i mean whatever failure you're going to come up your, with in your, your, cover, your cover garment stuff cover like that. Garment, you're not everything. getting it you know getting the exaggeration and getting it up out of the way you start mm -hmm. hooking mm -hmm. and yeah holster um sights gun yeah uh really you know right is you know because it i i guess uh I can't see anyone doing this with a double action only gun. It, it would be tough. It yeah. would be real tough. Um, um, Mitchell Act. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, Mitchell Act, you know. Well, and that's going to depend upon the size of the gun. Um, sure. Right. Well, the other thing yeah. is, uh, um, you know, what's what type of gun? I mean, that, that'll also tell you. You, you repeat this drill seven or eight or ten times in a range session, and, and it will test your gun yeah. for, you know, reliability. Because it's going to – six rounds, reload, six more rounds, reload, six more rounds. I mean, if you're, if you're pushing it, trying to stay smooth and stay flat and, and you right. know, really test your skills pushing to the next level – this is going to test your equipment, your gun, your sights, yeah, um, everything all about it. All so yeah. this is this seems like a really simple, easy drill when you first see it, and yeah. uh, to put it into practice, it it it's a, a mildly challenging drill. I should probably a little more well, than mildly challenging, but it's a challenging drill sure. that tests every aspect of right. from your gear to your fundamentals to your gun, everything about it. It's mm -hmm. it's a it's a yeah. really good drill. And and that's a lot of it, you know. If you're not testing yourself, then you're not getting better. Yeah. So that's what you want to see. So. Right. And that leads right into the carry tip. Um, your effectiveness, you know, of drawing that gun, getting your sights on target, and and getting your shots off, um, is defined by how you train. And uh, it's kind of like. You know, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And if you... Isn't that the truth? If you don't train, then you're pretty much planning to fail. So you got to keep training, even if it's just mindset, um, you know, draw stroke, things like that, dry fire, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there's a lot of dry fire drills you can do inside um, when the weather's cold, um, wet, rainy, snowy, whatever you want. And, uh, but... You gotta remember if you need to if you need something like this ace drill and you get into a situation where you need that time and effectiveness and you don't do it beforehand, you, you're not gonna have a chance to do it then. No, no. So you're done. It's like putting your seatbelt on the wreck. Yeah. You know, so but yeah. try to get it on while yeah. while you're wrecking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> trying to get a seatbelt on while you're wrecking. Yeah. It's just not gonna happen. Yeah, so, it's not uh it's not gonna work out for you. So anyway, that's what we got for range tip and carry yep. tip. <clears throat> um, we're gonna we're gonna expand on the, the carry horizons with our video from this week. I, if you folks out there have seen it, um, it's a fella from I guess he was from Georgia jogging, um, and there we like to try and learn from these videos on all aspects of what we should do as a an armed citizen but be a moral armed citizen um 
there's times when we'll bring up a video that says, hey, we should not have gotten into this situation. We should not have used our firearm in this situation. There's times when we bring up a video where somebody didn't use a firearm or didn't have one available or used less than stellar techniques. And we say, they should have done this. Um, and then I think this is going to kind of highlight one of the situations that uh, they shouldn't even been there. Um, yeah. See if we can pull this up. Um, so this is the video here. Um, and I may need to slide this around a little bit so that I can play this. But uh, well, let's just get into it here. Um, see if we're going to actually play anything here. Here we go. Here we go. There it goes. Yeah. So essentially what we're seeing is a, a truck and um, for whatever reason, I can't pause this. I want to go back. Um, so obviously the individual in the truck is following this man here who's jogging. A uh, little backstory behind this. I did as much research as I could find that was factual. Um, there is a lot of stuff about this video out there um, that really, really don't want to get into. We're looking for something factual and something that we know and can prove. So the, the backstory that I found that is as factual as we can state it is, um, was there was there was robberies in this neighborhood and for whatever reason this fella was jogging in that neighborhood and the pickup truck that's following them i don't know if they were involved but the pickup truck that is in the camera view right now um there's two gentlemen waiting for him and what we're going to see is and the camera is horrible this guy comes up and he's trying to avoid this truck, right? We can see that. Now we see one armed individual here and this fella fighting with him over a shotgun. Well, here's the gig. Um, even if the guys in this, in this pickup truck were right in their assumption that he had stolen something, you need to take the entire situation into account. <clears throat> you are dealing with a tangible, tangible piece of personal property. There is no reason that we can ever think of to not only pursue somebody, um, but pursue somebody with deadly force over a tangible piece of personal property, um, especially after they have gotten out into the street. The yeah. second thing that I was thinking on this was the man's jogging. He's wearing shorts and a T-shirt. What could he have possibly stolen that was worth anything? And he's hiding on his person. He's jogging. I, where? What is he? Like, what's he got? Right? <clears throat> so now we have two armed men approaching this guy. And the... The fella in the white t-shirt that was jogging, his response as he went around the truck and the guy pointed the shotgun at him was to go for the gun and try and defend himself. It's a perfectly reasonable response. Mm -hmm. uh, a little more yeah. backstory. One of the fellas out of the white pickup truck was a retired police officer. Um, so he should have known all of this beforehand. Uh, so as we can... Watch this progress. This guy, for whatever reason, takes aim at the person. We hear three shots from the shotgun, and he tries to run away and collapses. That's the end of the video. Okay? So when we start back here, we see as we come around the corner in the, this camera view, Look how far away 
the the truck is from the person. Yeah. They they have no representation of fear of their life or great bodily harm. Yeah. They are the attacker in this yep. situation. Even if the gentleman <clears throat> running had attacked one of them, that they, fight is still over. the antagonist. They have gone yeah, if it was and picked done another previous. fight. Yeah, even if, if it, it was, was done, done previously. previously. Right. Even if the fella had stolen something, it was done previous to this fight. There is no legal leg to stand on when you pursue anybody. Um, if this guy that was jogging was carrying one of their kids down the road, maybe they could have, you know, said, "Hey, he was trying to kid my, kidnap my kid," right? Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. No, he's jogging. He's jogging. He's out for a job. This is not. Uh, this is not legal. It's not justified. It's not moral. It, there, there's nothing about it that is going to stand up in the court of public opinion, the the court of morals, or the court of law. They have done lost all three of those at, at this particular point. Um, and there's there's a lot of racial stuff that's been been thrown around that um i don't know if it's true or not i have no idea what i can tell you is for 100 percent certainty the guys in the pickup truck are in the wrong 100 percent in the wrong they're probably going to go to jail um and rightfully so and rightfully so that even in my opinion if they come out with some blinding new evidence that this particular person had done something atrocious before they got to the video, they're still in the wrong because that initial altercation was done and over with. They should have called the police and dealt with it and let the police go and find this particular person. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I don't, I, I can't. Vig vigilanteism. Yeah. And, and I think that's what's happening. I just can't, I can't put, a piece of information in there in this particular situation that would say, okay, that would make sense. It, it just doesn't. Um, this isn't something that a, a, a consumer carry or a licensed gun owner or anything like that. We, we need to know about this kind of stuff. We need to avoid this kind of thing. Apparently tempers are flaring in that particular neighborhood. It's just well, a sure bad are, situation. That's no reason to chase somebody down and shoot him with a shotgun until he's dead. Right. You know? Well, because, and we yeah. talked about the gentleman that was in Dayton a while back that um, <coughs> people were breaking into his shed and he went out there with a shotgun and right. ended up in a physical altercation with somebody who was bigger than him and defended himself with his handgun. Mm -hmm. um, and he was still in the wrong because he wasn't in danger while he was in his house. Right. Somebody was no. out stealing tangible personal property out of his shed yep. that was not worth defending. Right. It really it wasn't worth a fight. Like, call the insurance man. Have him write you a check. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, and, and stuff like that, especially in a shed. You got your lawnmower and a weed whacker and, well, wow, maybe some tools. Yeah, maybe, maybe some tools and, you know. All the wife's old flower pots. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most of the crap in your shed, you were looking to get rid of anyway. You just yeah. hadn't thrown it out yet. You're going to yeah. wait another five years to throw it out because mm. you might need it. Yeah. If somebody took it, he probably like, helped yeah. you out. Man. I know, right? You probably should have paid him to take it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. You'd have waited a while. I had to put it out the shed and yeah. you wouldn't have had to break the door. But in this situation, I he doesn't have anything first off. <clears throat> And I know some people are going to email me or call me or send me a message or something and say, hey, well, according to Georgia law, well, according to Georgia law, if you, you have to catch the person in commission of a felony to use any type of force to stop the felony, this guy wasn't in commission of nothing. He was running down the street. Yeah. Either it already happened or it never happened. So, right. yeah. Yeah. I was out the window. Yeah. Um, so this is something that uh, – is detrimental for the the good side of the gun community. It yeah. it's detrimental for 
Race Makes relations all look like whack jobs. It, it it really does. It yeah. really, really, really does make us all look bad. And this is the kind of stuff that we want to avoid. Um, I mean, the, the man's dead over nothing. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Right. Uh, so on to the news. Um, we'll do stuff a little, a little backwards. Here. Yeah. Well. Here's the other part of it too. Just based on you know a, a quick Google search, and I mean, I'm not a lawyer or anything. I don't pretend to be or anything like that. But generic Google search says a burglary is usually classified as a felony. Breaking and entering usually classified as a misdemeanor. Hmm. So somebody if the be guy home. if the guy even if he broke into a home. And left, and if, especially if that home was unoccupied, that's B and E. You know, even if he broke in and he stole a few hundred bucks, that's breaking and entering, which is a misdemeanor. So all you people out there want to say, well, you know, Georgia law, are you? You have to be in commission of a felony, and yeah. if he was com even if somebody was committing breaking and entering, yeah. and swiped the wallet, you know. Put the wallet out there. That's that's a misdemeanor. So yeah. yeah, does that warrant a death sentence? No. And that's where you have to, you know, you know, you're not the lawyer either. So you, you know, can't make that. How do you make that justification of, especially in something like that where you know stuff's getting broken into? Is it burglary or is it breaking and entering? <clears throat> is it a misdemeanor or is it a felony? And now you've played judge, jury, and ex executioner on something that was a mis you know, could have been a misdemeanor. The crime. problem with that is you don't know until after the jury comes back. No. Right. What did he get convicted of? Because you even if he's accused of something, doesn't mean he's guilty of it. No. You don't know that until the jury comes back. No. So yep. it's one of them things. You you don't know the outcome until the outcome comes and tells you what the outcome is. Is what it is. So learn from that and don't do that. Um, we got a drive-by shooting uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. One person was killed, another critically injured after shooting at a tattoo parlor in Whitehaven. Um, these are kind of really odd, really. Drive-by shootings aren't a, a popular thing anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so when they come up, <clears throat> at least we don't hear about them a lot. Well, this one says it was, they were, it was people inside oh, the yeah. store, though, yeah. in the article. Yeah. Um, he said the owner of the jewelry box off Elvis Presley Boulevard was in violation of the stay-at-home order and opened for business early Friday morning when the argument broke out between customers and store workers. That's when shots were fired. One employee was killed inside the shop. Another was rushed to the hospital. Uh, no word yet if they have anyone in custody. Police said the owner would be held accountable since the business was open when it should not have been Um. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, Jack for information, but uh, yeah. I brought this up just because it seems like um, every day that we're hearing about something like this, it seems like people are going a little stir crazy. Yep. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> to our neighbors <clears throat> up north, um, they have kind of lost their marbles. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. The public safety minister has drafted a list of firearms to be banned, including weapons used in mass shootings. And uh, this guy's name is Justin Trudeau. Yep. Um, he did it by executive order. Apparently, he's from across the pond or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah. they're going to ban some 1,500 makes and models of military-grade assault style weapons in Canada, effective immediately. Starting today, licensed gun owners will no longer be allowed to sell, transport, import, or use these sort of weapons. Um, I said that the market is closed. Um, Trudeau said there would be a two-year amnesty period to allow people who already own these firearms to comply with a ban. Promised to pass legislation in the coming months to provide fair compensation to people who own these firearms. The Liberal Party promised some sort of buyback program in the last election, something that would cost taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, the full list of firearms that have been banned is available through the Canada Gazette. I didn't look at it, but I can only imagine what it is. 
fifteen hundred um, different t different <coughs> types I was of reading models. Oh my goodness! WNSF or NSF was that thing yesterday, where the way that's worded, anything over twenty millimeters is banned, which a twelve gauge shotgun is twenty four millimeters. Really, just in effect, ban twelve gauge shotguns and ten gauge. Really, and, and they say, "Oh no, we didn't do that. We didn't do that." That's what it says. Probably anything yeah. semi-automatic. Oh yeah. Probably mm -hmm. anything magazine fed well, with, a, with a detachable magazine. I uh, I I did a little bit of you know half-assed research on this a little bit, and I saw a list of a guy making fun of it. Um. I guess, and I don't know whether it's been revised or not. We should probably go look. But uh, black rifle coffee was considered an assault weapon. And uh, AR15.com, so they banned a website, and a couple of other um, ARF.com and stuff like that. So they, they thought the websites were, uh, you know, assault weapons. And they, they banned the black rifle coffee company because um, they thought it was an assault weapon. And uh, so they – they were a little light on their research also. I mean, we've been busy. The liberals always are. Well, well, they been, come up with some goofy crap. In, in our defense, we've been busy, you know, training new gun owners and, you know, doing defensive pistol and doing all kinds of stuff and ordering all kinds of freedom-related stuff and selling guns and stuff like that. Um, these people are paid to do research. We just do it as yeah, for shits and giggles, I guess. I don't know. Have a good show on Friday night. But uh, yeah, they did. I, they kind of butchered this one a little bit. It's just um, stupid. It says these weapons were designed for one purpose and one purpose only: to kill the largest number of people in the shortest amount of time. There is no use and no place for such weapons in Canada. Uh, here's here's the big one, and and this is why I brought this article up. While he acknowledged that most firearm owners are law-abiding citizens, he said hunters don't need this sort of firepower. Well, this just shows you how much of an idiot he is, because an AR-15 has got less firepower than most of your actual big game hunting rifles and shotguns. That, and over I mean, twelve gauge shotgun, thirty out six, a, a ton less yeah. firepower. Two two yeah. three. I mean, yeah. thirty out six. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just insane. Yeah, just insane. So, I did, maybe, <clears throat> maybe we should go to Canada and give well, these guys a training class, and I and then they would know if we just did the ammunition fundamentals part of it, so they knew at least what calibers go where. They could figure it out because normally, when you're talking metallic cartridges, the bigger the number, the bigger the cartridge, right? I mean, that's a pretty simple representation. It's backwards with shotguns, but yeah, we wouldn't tell them that either. So, well, and and part of it, you know, it's hard to you know not maybe get a little tinfoil hatty and you know despite everybody's you know arguments and they always try to throw that argument in there well you know oh, well, hunters well well some of these guns maybe i'm not have for hunting it's part of that whole you know defend against tyranny part of that you know, you know mm -hmm. of the second right. amendment in the constitution and well but canada doesn't have that but no. but you know it, it, especially you know down you know here like it's hard to get a little tinfoil hatty of well, this is their last step towards getting rid of all the firearms so they yeah. can bring in their socialist wave. Yeah. Yeah. And or, I know that. Or you make know. that guy king, you know. Yeah. yeah. It makes you wonder yeah. sometimes. You, know, you wonder, oh, oh man, these, well, people still, the, these people still got them. We're scared of them. Well, we got, now the, we got laws to get rid of them. Here's the, uh, the, the thing that we see a ton of times over and over and over, even in this country. You don't need an AR-15 to bring down a deer. I do. Well, in Ohio, I have an AR-15 in 350 Legend. Yeah, because it's a straight wall cartridge, and because I'm not allowed to use the 556 tapered cartridge because, because it's it was, too small. Because it's too small, and it's tapered. Because the state won't allow me to, I built one in 350 Legend. That is what I have to use to bring down a deer. Yeah. So, kaput to your argument, bud. Well, there you go. <laughs> I was gonna say, well, that. An AR-15 is kind of a crappy deer rifle in 223 because it don't have enough power. No. I mean, it'll work. 
but it's always better to have them. I mean, it's a little more, you know, it's a lot more accurate than a 12 gauge. So I guess you could count yeah. on the accuracy to maybe get headshots right. with a, a BB gun. But if I'm pulling a trailer, I'd rather do it with an F-350 than a Cavalier. So, <laughs> I mean, there's also that argument. It's true. <laughs> Generally speaking, an assault-style weapon is a semi-automatic firearm with an ammunition magazine built to fire quickly. Um, we skipped over the part that said that there's no legal definition in can of assault weapon or military style. Well, they're going to they're gonna have to define that. Yeah, yep. right. Well, all they Canadians, just did. Semi-automatic yeah. and magazine fed. All yeah. Canadians must be in compliance with the law by April 2022. Um, there's an amnesty period. The government official speaking on a background of the technical brief for journalists said the number of these now banned firearms currently in circulation is unknown. There are 105,000 firearms currently classified as restricted that will now be classified as prohibited. Principal models, M16, AR-10, and AR-15 rifles and M4 carvings. Ooh, I'm going to buy a CAR-15. <laughs> well, the this isn't an exhaustive list. Oh, the old Vietnam era. little stubby yeah. AR. Yeah. A Ruger Mini-14. U.S. Rifle M14. That's a 308. It only holds like 10 rounds. VZ58 and VZ858. Those are AK-47s. Robinson Armament XCR. CZ Scorpion Evo 3 Carbine and Pistol. Well, let's get an Evo 2. Uh, I don't even know if they make an Evo 2. Breda CX4 Storm. Sig Sauer. SIG MCX, SIG Sauer, SIG MPX carbines and pistols, Swiss Arms Classic Green, and Four Seasons Series rifles. Government officials said that at the end of the two-year amnesty, gunners must dispose of it. Uh, today's ban does not cover handguns, the weapons of choice for gang members. Blair promised Friday to enact legislation down the line to give municipalities the power to, to ban these firearms. Well, handguns in Canada are tough to begin with anyway. Uh... The fireman's band comes less than two weeks after Nova Scotia gun massacre. But this guy run around with a shotgun for like two days, right? I think we did that a couple weeks ago. Yeah, he burned his own house. He had a death yeah. wish. They didn't eat. He committed suicide by cop. <clears throat> anyway. So we're going to burn a house down and ban AR-15s. Yeah. Right? This makes exactly. a lot of sense. It was an excuse. Um Man, the rest of this is a bunch of garbage. A bunch of crap about he used illegal firearms. Well, no kidding, they always do. It's just a bunch of garbage. So, our to our brothers and, and sisters in Canada, hopefully you can get a somebody other than this dude to represent you, and maybe I don't know, maybe you can get somebody to uh, you know go up against this or something. Do something. Well, he are. I think he's the one that already had him. Already convinced all the government officials, this Trudeau, that he should be able to run for a third term too. So, oh really? So, yeah, and so, hmm, just like Bloomberg did in New York City. Yeah. Well, um, so <clears throat> north of the border, they're having a little trouble. South of the border, here in Massachusetts, the judge orders the reopening of gun sales in Massachusetts. Um. U.S. District Judge Douglas Woodlock has held that the closing of gun stores, part of a broader closing of many businesses, was an improper burden on Second Amendment rights. The judge said he would direct the state to allow firearm retailers to reopen by noon on Saturday under a series of restrictions meant to promote cleanliness and social distancing. The lawyer for the state indicated it may appeal. The story is based on Woodlock's oral statement from the bench, but I expect there will be a written order shortly. I hope to blog it out then, thanks to commenter Dr. Ed for the pointer. Here's the order. Following two hearings, uh, May 4th, 2020, regarding the plaintiff's request for interlocutory injunctive relief. I had never heard of that word before. Uh, and after consideration of the party's evidentiary and other submissions to date, the reasons stated during and reflected in the stenographer's record of the proceedings, it is hereby ordered that. Firearms dealers licensed pursuant to Massachusetts General One, Channel One, Chapter One Forty, Chapter Paragraph One Twenty Two shall be permitted to conduct sales of firearms and other goods and may sell ammunition if licensed uh, by appointment only 
with not more than four appointments per hour. Such firearm dealers are limited to operating only during the period of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. daily, subject to any further land use limitations imposed by local government. Uh, firearms dealers subject to this order shall ensure the following proper social distancing, ensuring all employees and customers cover their noses and mouths with mask or cloth face covering, allowing access to hand washing facilities, providing alcohol based wipes, establishing procedures to ensure customers remain at least six feet apart. Writing full or partial glass or plastic barriers, establishing procedures to sanitize frequent touch points throughout the day, establishing procedures to sanitize merchandise, establishing procedures to sanitize any merchandise handled by customers, uh, employees and other personnel who are sick shall not return to work, uh, symptoms of COVID-19 requested not to enter, establish such procedure that the business deems necessary to limit the spread of the virus, the terms of this order shall take effect noon Saturday. Um, it all sounds like pretty standard stuff that we've all been dealing with. The only thing that I'm wondering about is, um, in here, they're operating only during nine to nine land use limitations by the government. Ensure all employees and customers cover their noses and mouths with masks or cloths covering. <coughs> um, we are required as dealers to verify photo ID. So mm -hmm. I wonder how strict they're going to get on that. Yeah. I mean, if they're going to pull a mask down, you can verify, okay, put the mask on. That's fine. But, you know, if, if I'm going to come in with my, my guard, my whole face covered, wear a pair of sunglasses, I don't know if that's just – why go with anybody's driver's license? How do I know? I mean, yeah, I mean, it. straw purchase, when the Unabomber comes walking in, you know, ah, I don't think so, get out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think so. So uh, uh, yeah. a little common sense is probably going to be needed with this order. And uh, my fear, like most other times that happens with government, is uh, they don't have any common sense, so they're not going to use it. Yeah. You know I mean? They don't have any common sense, and they – and. Like, especially in states like Massachusetts and all of the, you know, what we call the commie sea up there up north of us, you know, these lawmakers and just like we saw with the Canadian, you know, they write all kinds of goofy laws that are so wildly crazy and complex that three days later, they don't know what they, what they well, even so wrote like the passed. ammunition law they wrote in California and put oh, on the yeah. ballot. Nobody can figure it out. Yeah. They don't know. Yeah. Nobody can figure out what the Even the lawyers can't figure it out. Yeah. I mean, they screwed up a gas can for Pete's sake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, which leads us right into the next article. Pittsburgh appeals order killing city's gun control law. Mm -hmm. How many... It, we just got a report from the governor of Ohio, right? The, Pennsylvania is still... The economy is still reeling from lockdown orders. Mm -hmm. Just like the state of Ohio, the whole country probably is, right? And here we go. The city of Pittsburgh is going to spend your tax dollars, which they don't have, apparently, fighting an illegal gun control law that goes past their state's preemption law. Right. Again, they're going to appeal it. They already spent the money to fight it. Now they're going to appeal it and pay more money out. After a judge struck it down as unconstitutional. Yeah. yeah. Preemption means local communities cannot create their own gun control laws. That's a good thing. There are a number of preemption laws on the books in various states, which is one which is Pennsylvania. Um, to keep confusion, a minimum people travel through the state after all. On a long trip, it's far whoops, easier to check state law than ordinance for every city you might travel through. Uh and then following the Tree of Life synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh, the city decided the preemption didn't apply to them. Um, they, Their own comments say they knew what they were doing but did it anyway. Unsurprisingly, their new law was challenged. They lost, but now the city is appealing the decision. City of Pittsburgh attorneys have filed a motion to appeal the judge's order striking down three gun control ordinances passed following a deadly shooting in the Tree of Life synagogue in 2018. Um the court documents were filed last week. Argue state law does not expressly say that cities do not have the authority to pass their own gun control ordinances. I think it says that, if I read it correctly when I did read it, that just like Ohio, only the state legislature has the power to 
pass legislation on the use of the use, carry, manufacture, sale, disposition, blah, 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 of arms, ammunition, and all related parts. So it kind of does tell the city of Pittsburgh that you're not allowed to do that. Only we're, only the, the legislature is allowed to do that. Uh, neither courts nor lawmakers, the city's attorney reportedly wrote, expressly said or held that cities are completely powerless to act in this area. I think they did. The city's ability to legislate gun control policy may be limited, but it's not extinguished, they continued. Uh, interesting take. Is the city, though, does the law fail to say cities are completely powerless on this? Oh, no, it's quite explicitly, actually. Oh, here we go. No county, municipality, or township may in any manner regulate the lawful ownership, possession, transfer, transportation of firearms, ammunition, ammunition components, when carried or transported for pur purposes not prohibited by the laws of this commonwealth. That's pretty simple. That's pretty simple. You know, even we're not lawyers, and I can say I can tell you what that says. Mm. You can't do that. The only thing that's that's missing in here is use. I'd put use in there. Yeah. But there you go. And it says right here, I'm not a lawyer. Down below, sure they can regulate the use of weapons. Yeah. Uh, they can ban discharge of weapon within the city limits, but not the ownership, sale, or much of anything else. Looks pretty damn clear to me. Well, it does me too. Uh, the city's appealing the ruling, thus wasting more taxpayer dollars on lost cause. They won't win, not if the ruling is based on the law itself. Uh, unfortunately, we can't rule out what happening by any stretch. Instead, we can only hope that the courts follow the law and not public opinion moving forward. Well... I don't know the city of Pittsburgh. I don't think the public opinion is that they actually want this. I think this is legislators overstepping their bounds. Yeah. And that's it is what it is. Um so some cool stuff. Five subtle gun storage tactics for home or car. We talk about this kind of stuff a lot. Um sometimes the best way to hide something is right there in plain sight. Um I don't know what this thing is, but it looks pretty cool to me. I want to investigate it. <clears throat> um, knock at the door when you're sleeping. I don't think I'm going to read this whole article. Here's five innovation products to get you started. Go magnets, gun mounts. Um, I'm not a super fan of magnets because anybody can just walk up and grab it. But if it's hidden in the right spot, it can be useful depending upon your situation. Um, this thing here, Reach by Vera. Uh, it looks like any gun safe you've seen before, but this one, although you can see the outline of the handgun, the only person who can get that gun is the one whose thumb point is programmed in. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, the safe is simple to install and go in your car, bedside table. You're only limited by your imagination, your situation. The all metal locking system keeps your pistol secure until you grab it. After gra gripping the gun, put your thumb right on the sensor, then it's in your hand. Um, that's really cool unless... You have problems with fingerprint sensors, which I do, and then it's not for everybody. Um, but if you're into that kind of stuff, then, you know, it looks like a good idea to me. I mean, it's pretty cool. Uh, 300 bucks, though. Is it? Yeah, yeah 299 Wow. That's a little steep. Yeah. Uh, rapid Safe Night Guard. Um, Designed specifically to work with your bedside furniture. Uh, comes complete with a clock and USB charging ports and using the included RFID bracelet. Um, Hornady's been doing this for a long time. you got to wave an RFID bracelet. I don't know if I'd want to wear that sleeping, but no. whatever. Um, not a fan of RFID. Night Guard also works with an access code that you program in. Uh, lockdown under desk holster. Um, looks like you snap or screw that on. Uh, elastic holster holds handgun size from the smallest to the uh, two full size guns. Um, convenient hiding option, not very secure. Um, tactical fast box. Uh, so if you're dealing with a long gun, um, a bit more of a challenge to keep handy while in plain sight, but the folks that Secure Elt have found a solution called a fast box. Um, push button locking mechanism with a key override. 
Open silently in three seconds to reveal up to two rifles, 46 and a half inches long. Comes with pre drill holes for mounting. Um, you can mount the fast box in your car. Um, That's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, it, we're always looking for neat kind of stuff to to store things in, in either sensitive or odd locations. Um, there everybody's life situation is a little different. So you might want something home office. I don't know. I still yeah. want the one that comes out of the back of the hutch. Oh yeah. That'd be <laughs> really cool. That'd be awesome. Uh, your mother says no. <laughs> Why not? I, mean, I think it's cool. Maybe we should talk her into it. Yeah. But anyway, um, so there, I mean, there's just a ton of products out there that you can go to and find and, Internet's a powerful tool when it comes to that kind of stuff. They make some neat stuff. They make some pricey stuff. They make some simple stuff. Um, yeah, you, know. you can find it from five bucks to five thousand bucks. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Just like the you know yeah. any kind of safes, you know. You right. In. Yeah. No doubt about it. That is what it. I mean, cool stuff. All right. What do we got for product of the week? Ooh. We got tactical Tat handgun mag can. Here we go. These are all MTM products. Tactical Dayton, Dayton, mag cans. This is a tactical mag can for two, two, three, five, five, six magazines. You'll see inside there. Set up for magazines, loaded or unloaded, and a standard fifty caliber ammo can in it. Um, nice, nice thing about. I think those are a little. I, these little are bigger. bigger. Them are, bigger, are bigger than a fifty, 50 cal. cal. These yeah. are roughly about a thirty cal. Um, We've said this before when we you know, kind of looked, showed over some MTM products of uh, made in the USA, and uh, yeah, you might be able to see it back. Let's break everything. Made in the USA, and for those of you watching in your home state, in our home state here of Ohio, they are made in Dayton. They are made in Dayton, Ohio. So. With everything going on, you can you know start buying some MTM products. Buy American, man. Well, we're gonna yeah. be you're gonna be not only are you gonna be buying American, you're gonna be buying within the state and uh, with everything that's been going on, bringing that money back into the state. Yeah, that, that's sure gonna help some and folks. Keeping 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 our money in this state to help everybody out. Absolutely. So um, this one here holds 10 double stack mag, uh, handgun magazines and 10 30 round AR-15 magazines. So and they got nice, cool. nice, nice heavy foam. Yeah. And we've I talked know. about MTM products before. I mean, it, it comes with three locking points on this box. Um, mm -hmm. They're O-ring sealed. They're waterproof. Yeah, I got to they're darn near indestructible. I mean, these things will take abuse that you would not expect from plastic. Yeah. I don't know what kind of unobtainium they make these things from, but yeah. I dropped a 30 cal one of these full of 40 out of my truck. It did not come open, and it scratched the bottom of it a little bit. Oh, I've got a one of their old... Sportsman's dry boxes mm -hmm. yeah. that I've which had I think it. is actually this can. Eh, I, the lid is a little different, yeah. but it's just my but mine is twenty ish year, twenty plus years old. Yeah, um, I got one. I'm still doesn't get wet. Fifteen years old. Um, I have literally filled it to the brim with seven six two thirty nine, and was. Scared to pick it up because I thought there's no way that handle is going to stay on there. So before I moved it, I went and put my steel toe boots on and picked it up and went from the basement upstairs and out to my truck to go, you know, lighten it a little. And the hand, it was bending and it was bowing and I was worried about it and it didn't give up. Well, I, I did find, I did find one thing. That, that will happen to an MTM can. Um, if you fill, and you got to pack it in there pretty tight, you can get about 850 40 Smith & Wesson cartridges in a 30 cal MTM ammo can. If you drop it from about three and a half feet out of your one-ton truck, 
and the handle flips up. If it hits your running board just right and catches on it, it will unclip the handle from the snaps in which it is put into and then fall to the ground. But you can then take the handle and snap it back in the box and pick the can up. It's still loaded because it didn't, doesn't come open. <laughs> so we'll take the handle off, but the can weighs about 45 pounds. Yeah, exactly. Um, we did do this. Again, I think that insert's actually... Blue no, they're glued in. Yeah, they glued them in. So it's that good, you know, it's high density foam. Yeah, good oh, stuff. Good stuff. The MTM makes good stuff. These, the, we all got MTM stuff. Well, and it, some of here, here's, another, stuff. here's another thing, too, that, you know, we're kind of forgetting to mention. Padlock. They got holes in them for padlocks. And actually, I, I do that if I'm going to be doing a, you know, if we're doing a class or something like that and I'm bringing. You know, multiple pistols. I can. I'm gonna leave them. You know, I'm gonna have to. You know, leave them in my vehicle for a little while, or you know, come in here or something like that. I can padlock all that stuff up. Yeah. And you can padlock ammo cans. So if you're, you know, if you're traveling, you know, maybe you're traveling to take a training class, and um, you want to go. You know, you're gonna. You know, you're gonna be staying in a hotel. You do all that stuff. You know, you might. You can bring your guns in the hotel, but you don't want to carry, you know, they look at you kind of weird. You start dragging all that ammo in and, ob, you know, pretty obvious ammo cans. Yeah. Um, you can go to Lowe's. You can buy a big pack of padlocks. You can padlock them all together, you know, and take one big cable from, you know, your pistol lock box and loop it through all the padlocks and lock it to your seat frame. And then now somebody's got to fight to take your ammo or other yeah, you know, right. Valuables. There, you know, there's right. plenty of storage space, so it's nice. Or if you were even worried about, you know, if you wanted to lock them, lock it up so that it couldn't come open, even if it did fall and yeah. magically flip the latches and you know yeah. did all that stuff. I don't think I've ever seen one of these come apart. Well, I, I sometimes we get them that with the lids off when we order them. Yeah. Well, you can take the lid off yeah. if you want. But once they're snapped on there, they ain't coming off. Well, I've taken mine off. It takes a lot of well, pressure right. to get it off. Sure, um, yeah. you got to deliberately I'm, I'm, do it. I'm saying, I'm saying it's not falling under, under duress. No, it's not no, falling off. It's not falling off. But if you can fill one with 40 and drop it out of the yeah. door of my truck, it ain't, no you're not breaking it. No. No. So, but, yeah, sweet. You're right. Good stuff. It's, MTM's good stuff. All right, guys. They make and they make ammo crates big enough. You can't pick them up. Uh huh. They do. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> One we got in it was like this tall. There is no way you would be able to pick that up if it was full. Uh -huh. Absolutely not. Well, yep. if you could pick it up, you wouldn't need a gun anyway. No. So. All right, guys. That's what we got for you. Um, thanks for stopping and enjoying our show tonight. Um, Try and stay warm over the weekend. We're supposed to get snow. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to stay warm over the weekend. No. We are going to be outside uh, shooting. So um, maybe you shouldn't stay warm over the weekend. Maybe you should get out and shoot, train in the cold. Make sure your gear works. Yeah. Um, good idea. Be a good idea. So everybody, thanks for watching our show tonight. Uh, you could have done a lot of things, but you were here with us. And uh, hopefully everybody has a good and safe weekend. Um, enjoy it. And we will see you back here next week and uh, don't forget to like subscribe share on our facebook page and our youtube channel sure always good night guys <laughs>